Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. One of the victims in a November stabbing says he feels like police are sweeping this case under the rug and helping a dangerous man get away with attempted murder. The stabbing took place in Detroit Lakes, sending two people to the hospital. Later, they would be airlifted in order to get additional care. We were contacted on our whistleblower hotline after one of the victims said the person responsible was let go a couple of days later. And police said there wasn't enough evidence to charge him. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley has more on the story. Corey Swift's night on November 18th turned for the worst here at the Detroit Lakes Walmart when an old friend got in his car. Angry, his girlfriend was with Swift earlier in the night. We got to the back of the parking lot and I turned around because I couldn't believe that this friend of mine or somebody I considered a friend was doing this. And I turned around and that's when he stabbed me. Swift says his friend in the passenger seat was also stabbed, soon speeding off to the hospital down the road. I didn't even realize that I had been stabbed until I was standing there and... I feel my, the air in my lung bubbling on my shoulder. Swift woke up at Sanford after being in critical condition and airlifted to Fargo, only to be told that the man he claimed was responsible had been arrested but later released. He never saw the judge. He never was charged with anything. They let him go. Police say there wasn't enough evidence to charge the man accused. This despite Swift saying that police still have his clothes, his phone, and had his blood-ridden vehicle for weeks. I don't know what uh, more evidence they'd need. Uh, two people were stabbed, almost died in the hospital because of this person. Police tell me this is still an active investigation, but with little to no communication with any detectives, Swift says he begs to differ. I don't believe they're investigating at all, to be honest with you. I think they just put the file in the back of their cabinet and they're hoping that I shut up long enough and it goes away. And now as two months have quickly come and gone, Swift says he's tired of waiting around for the answers he wants and the justice he deserves. Reporting in Detroit Lakes, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. If you have any information on this case, you are asked to call Detroit Lakes Police at 218-847-4222. And if you need help uncovering an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. Fargo police say they are calling off the search for a man who allegedly stabbed a person in the chest in South Fargo. Police say they are no longer looking for Penja Lawuya because the victim does not want to cooperate with the investigation. The stabbing took place around 4 Sunday morning at Woodstone Apartments on Calico Drive South. Police say the person who was stabbed in the chest is recovering and again is not pressing charges. The good news is that today's weather has been very nice for early January in the Valley. However, it might not stay that way later in the week. Let's first find out from Hutch about tonight's conditions. Hutch? Well, our Monday started off on a very icy note across the region and it does look like we're going to see changes as we go through the overnight as well. But for right now, things are above freezing in Fargo, Jamestown and Point South. Up to the north, we're below freezing with some areas of icy roads still reported in northeast North Dakota and northwest Minnesota. Here are the changes coming. Some snow near Winnipeg is a developing low pressure system that's going to bring some light snow showers along with winds gusting over 40 miles per hour. Wind advisory posted for your Tuesday. Winds picking up consistently in the Devil's Lake Basin now sustained at 25 miles per hour. Still a few areas with reduced visibility. Steady temperatures this evening and the wind shouldn't be a problem until we get to the deep overnight hours. It may even wake you up. I'll have details on how that impacts your midweek forecast and beyond here in just a few moments. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. Trouble to report tonight at Bonanzaville in West Fargo. A Facebook post indicates that someone broke into one of the buildings and opened water spigots, releasing more than 200,000 gallons of water, flooding the property around the South Pleasant Church. Besides having to cover the cost of the water bill, the post says foundations for four buildings are threatened. There is also evidence that the vandal or vandals tried to get into two other buildings or rather other buildings on the property. New information regarding the video you see behind me. We're told that the man recording off his phone has been banned from entering the Crookston Walmart for a year. The video shows Joshua Batts' phone being knocked out of his hands by a Walmart employee. Batts says he accidentally didn't scan a loaf of bread and started walking out of the store. The employee asked to check his bag, which Batts denied. That employee, that led the employee to knock the phone out of Batts' hand. 
The case has been forwarded to the Crookston City Attorney for possible charges. Authorities in Ottertail County are wondering who broke into 15 different fish houses over the weekend. Officers say the break-ins happened on these lakes, Jolly Ann, Sewell, and Ten Mile. A fish locator, underwater cameras, ice chisels, spears, ice fishing rods, and spearing decoys were all stolen. Many of the fish houses were also extensively damaged. Anyone with information can contact the Ottertail County Sheriff's Office at 218-998-8555. A heads up for residents living in Emirato, North Dakota, starting at 9.30 in the morning on Wednesday. Crews are going to be shutting off your water supply to help replace and repair parts that help regulate the water pressure in the city. And the city wants to remind you to plan accordingly as maintenance could last between two to four hours. Hennessy's Irish Pub, located off of 45th Street in South Fargo, is shut down. A sign posted on the front door says closed. The bar is owned by Dave Erickson, who also owns neighboring Bulldog Tap. We tried getting a hold of him today, and he didn't return our call. The reason for the pub's closure is not known. The city of Moorhead is welcoming a new mayor today. Jonathan Judd was sworn in alongside council members Shelley Dahlquist and Chuck Hendrickson. Judd has lived in Moorhead for 15 years now. He does contract work as a public defender with the 7th Judicial District and is also an adjunct professor at Minnesota State University. Judd and the council members were sworn in by the Honorable Judge Amber Gustafson. Tim Walls officially took the reins as Minnesota's 41st governor today. He used his inaugural address to stress the need for better education and health care for everyone. Walls told the crowd of dignitaries and supporters that disparities in the state's educational system are holding the state back from reaching its full potential. The former teacher says Minnesota must become the education state for all children, regardless of race. Walls also says Minnesota must figure out how to deliver health care more effectively and affordably with better results. That includes investments in cutting-edge research. Minnesota is the only state in the country right now that has a divided legislature, with Democrats set to control the House, Republicans set to control the Senate. Later.